This is the Sony a7 III, and I'm here to talk about if it's worth it to buy in 2021. Hello everybody, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jason Hill. I'm a photographer, a videographer, and a marketing professional. This channel is really gonna be about teaching you guys digital marketing skills, uh, photography and videography skills, and how you can grow your photography and videography business in um, the current year and moving forward. This camera came out in February of 2018. So it's coming up on its three year old mark. And you might be thinking that's pretty old for a camera Why are you reviewing it. Um, if you're not familiar with this camera, it pretty much changed the game. And I'm actually gonna put this down for a second. If you wanted one camera to do it all, that was the camera. And to be honest, I think it still is in 2021 at an even better price point. Um, so let me go over the specs a little bit here. So video specs, it shoots 1080p, full HD, 120 frames per second to give you that buttery smooth, slow motion video. It makes for really, really awesome B-roll. Um, at 100 megabits per second. So it's got a pretty good um, bit rate to write to your memory card. It shoots 4K at 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second if you're into that, but I recommend shooting at 24 frames per second if you're a filmmaker. Picture profiles, it shoots in S-Log2, S-Log3, and HLG. Those are all phenomenal and can give you uh, more color grading options later on in post. Um, it's got the Bion ZX processor. I've got my notes right here with a 24 megapixel sensor, and it also has in-body image stabilization. So if you're using a lens that does not have stabilization on it, you're gonna have a little bit better smooth video, less shake, less of those micro jitters. So that's gonna help you a lot in that department. Photo-wise, this camera has dual card slots. That's super important if you're a wedding photographer or an event photographer because you want to have a backup of all your files. 693 autofocus points. That's amazing. I mean, the autofocus on this thing is incredible. And touching on autofocus, it also has eye and animal autofocus, which makes focusing on people and animals feel like cheating. It's so easy. All you have to do is pretty much hold down the shutter halfway, and it's going to get your focus 99.9% .9 of the time. The eye autofocus is that good. It really is a game changer. Um, I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. It is amazing. The screen is 921,600 dots, which is not that great, but um, you know, it's okay. It, it gets the job done. It's not a flip screen, it's a tilt screen, so it does not flip all the way out like the Sony a7C, so you are missing out on that if you're a vlogger. But a lot of photographers and a lot of more professional people don't really like that because there's more potential to break. To me, I could go either way. I don't need it, but I could also see it being useful. It has a max shutter of one over 8,000, and it shoots 10 frames per second, guys, which is amazing for shooting anything sports or animals because they're fast moving. Like the Canon RP that came out, I think last year, only shoots three frames per second. So it, for the price, it's amazing. Um, and I'll get to the price in a second. Battery life is about 710 shots, and it uses the same um, Sony battery that most of the full frame cameras use, the NP FZ100 battery. And getting to the price, the price of this camera is 1698 US dollars for the body. That's a really good price. Um, the camera came out at I think about 2100 uh, uh, three years ago. So I kind of wanted to go over some of the pros and cons for you guys. First of all, it's decent in low light. It's not, you know, it's not the Sony a7S III, but um, it's a great camera. It's really good low light. It gets the job done. You don't have to boost a crazy ISO to see your image. Fast shutter speed, like I said, it shoots at 10 frames per second. That is going to be amazing for you right now and for years to come. That's 10 frames per second is not bad at all. It's act I would say it's still above average and that's gonna get the job done for you. Whether you're doing weddings or animals or sports photography, you know, whatever you're taking photos of, 10 frames per second is really plenty. Um, unless you're doing something like, you know, race car drivers or something like that. It's got really good battery life from the testing I've done so far. I've taken it out in the cold. Um, we're having a polar vortex right now and I took it out for an hour or so in the cold, took some pictures, and I lost maybe 15% battery, which for minus five degrees is not bad at all. So I think it feels really good in the hands. Um, of course, 
Some people say it's a little small, but I'm coming from the Sony a6300. It's got dual card slots like I mentioned earlier, which is amazing for redundancy um, if you're an event photographer, um, and the dynamic range. The dynamic range is really, really great on this. And basically, if you don't know what dynamic range is, it's just the ability for your camera to get more details in, contra in high contrast situations. So if you're outside um, and there's, you know, a an amazing sunset you want to take a photo of, but you also want to get the foreground, you're going to have better dynamic range in achieving that photograph. And especially if you shoot raw, you're going to have way more control on this full frame Sony a7 III than you would on like a crop body camera, as far as, you know, turning up those shadows, bringing down those highlights a little bit. So it's a really great camera for dynamic range. Uh, 120 frames per second is really just a game changer. It's, I can't say it enough, it is a little overused in the YouTube world, but it just makes for amazing handheld footage. You don't have to stabilize as much with when you're slowing it down that much, the footage just looks amazing. And then 4K, um, a lot of people want 4K nowadays, and it shoots 4K 24 frames per second. No, it doesn't do 4K 60, I wish it would, but that's not a deal breaker for me because I still have that 1080 120 frames per second. Some of the other really video features that um, stand out to me is the autofocus is really spectacular um, you know it catches focus really well it's not too fast to where it's unnatural it's not too slow it's really perfect it's a great video camera and that's why this camera is such a great hybrid camera in 2021 a few of the cons um, it doesn't have a flip out screen I mentioned that earlier the Sony a7C which is basically like a upgraded version of the Sony a7 III in a compact body with a flip out screen. It's pretty much the same camera, except it has a flip out screen and it's a little smaller, which I don't like. So that's why I got the Sony a7 III and it doesn't have dual card slots, but no flip out screen on the Sony a7 III, which is okay. It's not the end of the world for me. It might be for you, but there's ways to go around that. Um, you know, if you're vlogging, use an ultra wide angle lens. If you're sitting in a home studio, use a monitor on your camera. Another con, it's got a touch screen, but not really. It's really limited in the touch screen. You can't navigate the menu system like you can on newer Sony cameras, which I find really, really frustrating. Um, so I don't really use the touch screen that much, to be honest. And again, it's not a deal breaker for me, but that might be something that is for you, especially because like all the Canon cameras have touch screens. Like Sony, what are you doing? Put touch screens, good touch screens on all of your cameras. But anyway, bringing me to my next con is the user interface. The user interface can be a little bit clunky and this is something people often complain about. Sony actually revamped their user interface um, on their newer cameras. This Sony a7 III does not have that interface. So it's a little clunky, but you can set a custom menu put everything you want into that custom menu. And from that point forward, it's really not that hard to do. Piece of dust. It's really not that hard to um, do, to set up your menus. And then once you do, you have all your stuff right there. So to me, it's not that big of an issue. It is a little outdated, it takes a little getting used to, especially if you're coming from Canon, because Canon's menus are so amazing. That is one thing I'll give up to Canon. Their user interface is so good. That's pretty much it for my cons guys. So do I recommend this camera in 2021? Yes, 110%. I recommend the Sony a7 III in 2021. This camera is just amazing. It was regarded as one of the best full frame cameras on the market three years ago. And I personally still think for the price, it's one of the best. And the, the images and the videos that you can get out of this thing for 1600 bucks, it's just amazing. This camera's great. I highly recommend it in 2021. If you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, whatever you do, photo or video, I really think you're gonna love this camera. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, please like this video if it helped you. It really means a lot. There's so much I wanna talk about and teach you guys. So I'm really excited for this year um, and I really hope you follow along. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or whatever it is where you're watching this. Thank you.